Awesome. Okay, so who here has um, never used Rails before at all? Great. So everyone will come next month to the next meet? <laughs> we'll need a new venue, maybe. Let's ask, let's ask him at the end of the <laughs> um, Who here has heard that Rails is fast? Ah. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Who here has heard that Rails is fast to develop in or to prototype with? Okay. So one of the, the reasons that's the case is from the convention over configuration. And basically that means within Rails, a lot of things are um, rather taken as a convention rather than you actually configuring something and doing it. So if you write your code in a certain way, you write your application in a certain way, it sort of magically hangs together and you don't need to write large config files for it to all sort of you know, be told what it has to do. There's conventions everywhere. There's a lot of different conventions in Rails, and I'm only going to look at one small aspect of it, but um, the, even the application structure is a, has a convention. When you generate your application with the Rails command, the layout is with a convention. All the application files are in a certain location. Log files go somewhere. Tests go somewhere. It's kind of cool because it means if you start on a new project, you know where to look for most things, you know, unless someone's gone and changed things. Um, Action View has a bunch of conventions with where like templates are, are held and what their extensions are and so forth. I think someone's going to talk about them a bit later. Action Controller, which handles the routing when you get a request that comes in from the outside, how it actually gets handled by the controller, and then uh, how that actually feeds data back and forth to the re response, has its own conventions. And Active Record does, which is the one I'm going to look into now. So as John mentioned, Active Record is the the, so the relational mapping part that's in Rails maps uh, tables to classes, and then instances of those classes refer to records that are um, you know, in your database. So I've got a little example here. I grabbed this um, off the Hibernate web page and tutorial, <laughs> and um, I tried to understand it, but I guess basically what we could see is it's mapping a, um, a class called person to a table called people, specifying a bunch of properties and the primary key. That's the same in, in a Rails model. Why? How does that work? Well, basically in Rails, one of the first conventions are is that the table names are plural. So um, from here, we specify the class being person. It knows to look for a table called people. And Rails actually knows, it doesn't have to stick an S on the end, it actually knows a lot of the English language conversions that you know, plural of person is people. And, and you know, sheep, there's one sheep, there's two sheep, not sheeps or something else. Uh, it knows all this stuff. You can actually add your own in there as well. I have to know English. Have to know English. <laughs> 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 can I add your own? Primary key is always an uh, ID. It's an integer field on every, you know, by default on every, uh, every model. The column names in the table relate to instances in the actual class object. So when you go to access the data, you call it the same name as what the column name is. So here's an example of using that code. Person find all is basically the same as doing like a select to get all the records in that particular table. Um, for each one of them, block syntax will just loop over them and then print out the first name. It is configurable in the sense that you can change it. If you've got a legacy environment where you need to you know, interface to an, a database um, that has been established in a product and you need to be able to you know, work with it, you can actually go in there and change these things. Okay, so you can go in and specify what the table name is going to be, or turn off the pluralization altogether and just you know, live with the table name matching, or specify it completely. If you need to, say you're re rewriting you know, your favorite blog engine, which everyone seems to do in Rails, and you want to match the uh, you know, URI space for backwards compatibility, you can change the routing in the routes file so that you can uh, you know, get those backwards compatibility <coughs> links that are already in Google going through to the same data. Um, with primary keys, you can change the suffix or the prefix. You can add everything across, which is all fine. And you can, with a plugin, add support for composite primary keys. And that's it for the first one. <laughs>